Hello! Today I thought we should uh, rank the DCEU from uh, Man of Steel all the way to Wonder Woman 1984. We'll be going from uh, my least favorite all the way to my absolute favorite. So anyway, without further ado, shall we begin? So to start off, we're coming in at number 9 within the uh, DCEU, in my personal opinion, is... Justice League. This is, um, I consider this the Joss Whedon cut of Justice League since we're officially getting, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League March 18th. That is pretty much the main reason why I decided to do this video. The new trailer just came out and I, I'm really, really looking forward to it. So, pretty much, like, if, if you followed this one at all, you kind of realized and heard everything that went on behind the scenes that Zack had to step down because of a personal tragedy, and then uh, Joss Whedon came in and pretty much decided to reshoot the film and his entire vision, like, what he thought it should be. He wanted to give it more of, like, a Marvel tone and all that, and just, honestly, like, for the world that Zack Snyder was building, it just didn't fit, and I'm personally a fan of Marvel and the MCU and all that. I just, I thought that it did not fit whatsoever, but but, um, like, the the movie, like, I could go on and on. I could probably make a separate video about it for, like, all the problems that it had. Like, Steppenwolf did not look menacing. The CGI was very, very iffy at times. One of the only scenes that I did, one of the few Joss scenes that I did enjoy was, um, when Batman was on the rooftop and he stopped the criminal. But once again, like, the criminal, if I remember right, just kind of walked away, and I don't think Batman would ever do that, and then one of the other scenes, too, where they brought Superman back to life, and then Bruce was like, I, I, I don't not like you. Like, I, I can't see Batman ever actually doing that. I must have, a lot of uh, the behind-the-scenes stuff, a lot of people said it was very miserable working with Joss on set, and uh, pretty much, like, just everything about it wasn't what Zack originally had planned. He said about 30 minutes uh, that made it into this specific cut actually made it into, like, uh, the movie, only his 30 minutes, uh, like, 30 minutes of his actual footage. I mean, we even got Darkseid in the trailer, and I have no idea why they would cut Darkseid out of this, because Darkseid is their version of Thanos, well, technically speaking, Thanos is their, like, their version of Darkseid, because, uh, Darkseid came first, but anyway, like, why would you cut him out of it? I, I just, I got tons of problems with this film, um, it, it was too light, too vibrant, Batman, like, just wasn't, it's was just a lot of problems, but, like, I, I don't absolutely hate this movie, but, like, it is very, very low, it's, it'll probably score, like, a five or six, uh, like, a, with a, a, through, through a ten, it was just, it was bad, and, uh, Please tell me the reason that there was a Russian family in it. Like, I, I do not think that the Russian family had absolutely anything, anything to do with the plot of it overall. But, um, I, I'm going on a rant of that movie. But anyway, coming in at ninth place is Justice League, the Joss Whedon cut. So coming in at number eighth place is... Suicide Squad, the extended cut. This movie was a bit better than Justice League, but it did have a lot of problems, too. You could tell it was heavily edited down. You could tell they were highly inspired by Guardians of the Galaxy just to kind of, like, just make this movie in general. The The general villain of this movie just wasn't that interesting, wasn't that intimidating. I believe Enchantress and her brother, I can't even think of her brother's name, but, like, that's how unforgettable it was, and, like, I usually gravitate towards the villain. The villains are usually my favorite part of a certain movie, or just TV show in general, and I just feel like the villain was completely wasted. Joker, they hyped him up like crazy. He was in it for like seven minutes tops, and Jared Leto wasn't even that, like, that good as the Joker. I'm hoping he's a lot better in the Snyder Cut. I mean, he looks more promising. He looks better. There's just one scene, he's like, and then it's hunka hunka. It was just like, what, what, what are you doing? Like, this is not Joker. Joker is not a pimp. Uh, the casting that I did like, I did I did like uh, Rick Flag. I did like Harley Quinn. I did like Amanda Waller. I really liked Amanda Waller. I thought Amanda Waller was pretty good. Will Smith as Deadshot was actually really, really fun. Uh, he, I liked him a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, Captain Boomerang, he was really good. Killer Croc was fine. I mean, they kind of made him a bit different than the comics, but I didn't really have any problems with that. It was just, 
it was kind of a lackluster plot with just like action scene, action scene, action scene. Oh, you know what? We're going to re-edit the entire movie because our first trailer was met with mixed reviews, but our second trailer was um, met with awesome reviews. So we're just going to have the company that cut the uh, trailer cut the movie. And I thought that was probably the biggest mistake out of all of it. Um, the extended cut was a bit better. There's uh, one other Joker scene that I actually kind of liked in it where he was like... Girl, oh, I, even though that kind of sounded more like uh, Nicolas Cage, but like, he's like, are you happy now? It was just like, it was a bit better, but like, it still wasn't that good. And honestly, just Jared Leto as Joker, I, I don't know. I'm still not 100% sold, uh, sold on him yet, but I do hope he does do better in Morbius or just the Snyder Cut in general. But anyway, coming in in number eighth place is Suicide Squad. So coming in at number seventh place is... Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. This is probably the absolute longest name within the DCEU. But pretty much, um, the reason I rank this higher a bit better, uh, a bit better than, uh, Suicide Squad is they actually knew what they were doing with this movie and they, uh, let it be a true vision through and through. Like, for better or for worse. But, um, things that I did really like about this was, uh, Margot Robbie back as Harley Quinn. And even though he was nothing like the comic, I did really enjoy Ewan McGregor as Black Mask. I felt like he was a fun villain, over the top, exactly kind of fit for what this type of movie was trying to be. Now, it, it did kind of, like, it feels like it was kind of inspired by, like, Deadpool. They want Harley Quinn to be the DC's version of Deadpool, which I personally have no problem with. I really enjoy both of the characters. But uh, one of my biggest, biggest gripes in this movie was Cassandra Cain. If you ever read the comics, you know that that, that is not Cassandra Cain. They literally just grabbed, like, a random actress and they were like, okay, you know what? You are Cassandra Cain. So pretty much just do whatever you want. You probably never uh, read a comic to understand what the character is about, but good luck. And I was just like, uh, that's not Cassandra Cain. Um, Huntress, I thought that was good casting. I did enjoy her as Huntress. Um, Canary, I had no problems with her. But um, Zaz was okay. He wasn't the best. My favorite version is Gotham. But he, he is what he... He did the best that he was given. The action was cool when it was going on. The best scene, in my personal opinion, was probably when they... She uh, was in the prison and all that, and the only, only connection to any other movie besides Harley being in it and Joker being in it was when she walked by and saw, like, a wanted poster of uh, Captain Boomerang, and she's like, hey, I know that guy, and then she just kind of, like, uh, just kept going or whatever, but, um, it was okay at best. I enjoyed it, but it just wasn't amazing, but it was better than, uh, Justice League, I guess I will call it, and Suicide Squad, but anyway, coming in at number seventh place is... Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. So coming in at number 6th place is Wonder Woman 1984. This was a movie that got delayed, 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 and then it finally came out to theaters and HBO Max, and I uh, decided to go see it in theaters, and I was happy that I decided to go see it in theaters for one reason. The score, the score is absolutely amazing in it. That's probably one of the best things about it, but pretty much what the plot of this one is, is that um, Wonder Woman's in 1984 now, and... Um, Everything is a theme to the 80s, like extra, extra, extra 80s coming right at you. And uh, Pedro Pascal plays Maxwell Lord, the villain in it. We have Cheetah over to the side. Yeah, that was uh, one of my gripes with it. But pretty much what it was is um, you make a wish to the stone and it's pretty much the monkey's paw. Like it takes something in return. So it's pretty much a story of be careful what you wish for. But um, pretty much uh, this was a... a rather long movie. It was like two hours and 45 minutes, but I did actually enjoy it. I enjoyed the zaniness of it. I enjoyed the craziness of it, but um, one of the gripes with it was that it did feel kind of a bit too long, but I, I didn't really have any problems with that, but um, one of my favorite things in this was Pedro Pascal. Literally, like, this was Pedro Pascal acting as Nicolas Cage, acting as Maxwell Lord. Like, he was so over the top in it. And that was probably the best thing that, about it, that he was completely over the top. Like, he was like, he he, he was like, I need to get, uh, touch a lot of people at the same time. And what he pretty much decides to do is, is like, he goes on the broadcasting and he's like, you get a wish, you get a wish, everybody gets a wish. And he was pretty much like, uh, he was like going full on Oprah on everybody. And it was like, it was okay. Like, uh, like I, re I did enjoy it. 
just wasn't the, like the best Wonder Woman movie in my opinion. The other one was a bit better, but this one was lots and lots of fun. If you know what you were going into, if you went into it thinking that it was going to be just like the first one, then you were probably going to be like, okay, it's uh, like, what is this? And uh, one of my other gripes with this movie was uh, Cheetah. Cheetah was like not given a lot of screen time. They kind of just like sprinkled her story throughout the movie and then like at the end she had a big battle with uh wonder woman and that battle lasted for about two minutes and then she was zapped out of her cheetahness and she kind of just like was over there on the ground and that was it um spoiler warning <laughs> the movie's been out for a little while now it, it was just like it was it was like why, why couldn't they do more with Cheetah? But that that was my only gripe with it. Like, I feel like they could have done a bit more with Cheetah. But besides that, it was a solid movie. Um, It was fun to see Chris Pine back again as, as, as Steve Trevor. I feel like he was he's a really good pick for Steve Trevor. And they really do have, like, good chemistry in the movie. And there is a couple scenes that will actually, like, get you to shed a tear if you're truly invested in it. Which, it did get to me a little bit. But, like... It, it, like, it's a good movie, but it's just not amazing. But anyway, coming in at number six is Wonder Woman 1984. Life is good, but it can be better. So coming in at number fifth place is... Shazam! This movie um, was lots and lots of fun. It was pretty much in the vein of Tom Hanks' Big. And it, like... There's not much more to say about this. It was a fun movie. The villain was good. It was uh, super cool to see John Glover back again in the DC Universe. If you watch Smallville, he played Lionel Luther, And uh, there was one part that was great. In the opening scene, like, Savannah, like, the kid was like, I, I can't remember exactly what he was doing. But then, like, the car spun out of control because it took place at Christmas. And he's like, you little shit! You almost killed us! And then all of a sudden, the uh, car gets rammed, like, hard. And then it just goes uh, flying into a ditch. Like, I really enjoyed enjoyed that. I enjoyed the um, incorporation of the Seven Deadly Sins. It was nice to see Mark Strong back again in the DC Universe. He played Sinestro in uh, the Green Lantern movie, and now he's back uh, playing the villain in the Shazam movie. But what, if you don't know what this movie's about, pretty much it's a kid that discovers upon the old ancient temple of uh, uh, the Shazam power, I guess you could say, and pretty much he finds out if he just says the word Shazam, he can turn into a full uh, superhero, full adult superhero, but he's still a kid inside that adult body. So it, it's a fun movie. It's a super fun premise. It, it is a Christmas movie. Like the entire movie takes place at Christmas, which I think is perfect. And there is a reference to that scene where Tom Hanks is on the uh, piano playing it. Like Zachary Levi gets on it and then all Savannah comes running out. It was like, dun, dun, dun. Like it was like, it was perfect. It was a lot, a lot of fun. I highly recommend this movie. This is where like I thought the DCE was really, really getting its foot and then, uh, like, in my, like, list, this is where it was, like, really, really getting good. And uh, it was just a solid movie overall, and I highly recommend this one. It's lots of fun. So, coming in in fourth place is... Da -na 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 Wonder Woman. This is the first one, the one that takes place in World War One. This is a, a very, very well done movie. I highly enjoyed this. But pretty much um, half the movie kind of takes place on Themyscira. Then the other half is her exploring the new world, I guess you could call it. And um, one of the things that I really, like, really liked about it, it was more of an Easter egg, but I was like, ah, they threw that in, was um, when she tried ice cream and she's like, you should be proud of your achievement. This is, this is good. And I was like, ah, they threw that in from the New 52. That was lots of fun. But uh, pretty much the main villain of this is Ares, the god of war. And it's pretty much like men, like they're, they're still good, but they're still flawed and they're still evil. And like their mankind is just flawed in general. And that's the best thing, like that's the best message of the movie. Um, this uh, like was a, a prototype of a Bane. I feel like it too, where uh, Dr. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember the female villain's name, uh, like, it was Doctor Something, I can't remember off the top of my head, but anyway, like, she was creating this kind of formula, and then the general guy was taking it, and it was getting stronger, so it kind of, like, gave me vibes of, like, maybe a first edition of the Venom and all that, but, well, uh, like, the Venom that, uh, Bane projects and all that that he puts into himself, but, like, this is just a fun adventure movie, and it... Uh, 
it, it, like the no man's land scene is uh amazing i really really enjoyed that scene where she's walking up blocking the bullets one by one and just walking uh like right through it there's such a such a great scene and it's a really good movie um it did take itself seriously it did open up with diana going to the museum and then like talking well not like kind of emailing bruce and all that but like it, like it, i highly recommend this movie it's really good it's the best wonder woman movie out there and it's number four on the list so coming in at number third place is do 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 Aquaman. This movie completely surprised the hell out of me on how good it was. It is so visually stunning. It is so, so good. But pretty much uh, what this movie is about, okay, uh, real question is what isn't this movie about? They pretty much threw in the entire Aquaman New 52 run in this and he managed to juggle it pretty well. I believe the director's name is James Wan on this one. Yep, James Wan. He also did uh, one of the Fast and Furious movies. I want to say it was number seven, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But anyway, what this one is about like um Orm is in it played by Patrick Wilson and uh he's Ocean Master he wants the crown he battles Aquaman for it Aquaman gets his comic accurate outfit there's a big underwater fight like uh for the th uh, throne Black Manta's in it uh his human half is in it like every like absolutely everything Aqu like Aquaman that you can think of is in it the uh epic action scene at the end I did say uh, I would say is lots and lots of fun the fight between Orm and Aquaman both of them are really good but the second one is probably better especially how they managed to pull off Orm's uh comic uh book uh, uh comic book outfit too and not make it look like jokey or anything like they legit made it look good with the scales and all that and the underwater scenes aren't really that like they don't really take away from anything like the hair's floating that's about it you can see behind the scenes about how they actually did some of those scenes but like pretty much like i there's so much to that happened in this movie but like i highly recommend it like definitely get the 4k the 4k is just it is awesome like it is a great movie to experience on 4k it is so vibrant the colors are just awesome and like this is definitely the most fun dceu movie out there it's just like yeah i can't say enough good things about this movie like it was really hard to put it at number three but the other two is just like I, I i enjoy them a bit more but this is just such a such a great movie and i highly recommend it especially if you have a 4k player and a 4k tv get this on 4k it's worth the extra price so coming in at number second place is man of steel this one was really hard to decide between uh the second and first place but i decided like this would be at number uh two this is Zack Snyder's take on Superman. Henry Cavill plays Superman. Amy Adams plays Lois Lane. Michael Shannon plays General Jogd. Kevin Costner plays uh, Jonathan Kent. Diane Lane plays Martha Kent and Lawrence Fishburne. And Russell Crowe plays Jor-El in it as well. Lawrence Fishburne plays uh, Perry White, I want to say. But pretty much this movie I got to see in IMAX. And this movie completely shattered my expectations. This was, uh, in my personal opinion, this is the best Superman movie ever made. Like, I fully enjoyed it like from start to finish i enjoy the other superman movies too but this this is my personal favorite one like from the beginning to the end i love the look into krypton i love that we spent more than just like 10 to 15 minutes on krypton we spent a good 30 minutes on krypton and i thought that was like that was just awesome and russell crowe is a great Jorel, and i love how they kind of utilized him later on in the movie too but like the way that they utilize him in this one like i really really enjoyed it they they showed him being a badass they showed him like jumping from a uh, creature to creature into the water to make sure kal-el could go to earth and all that and Michael Shannon is a great General Zod. I really, really like him as General Zod. And that one point where, like, they were arresting him and he's like, I will find him. I will find him. And then, like, the big, big fight at the end. Like, the big, big fight was uh, really, really awesome between General Zod and Superman. And I like that this is a Superman that, like, knows, like, if, uh, like, he came to Earth and, like, is, like we honestly wouldn't accept him at first like it's not in human nature to accept things that we don't understand and like the dialogue in this is great the score is awesome especially when superman goes on his first flight and all that 
It's such a such a great great movie, and I do enjoy how the final battle do have implications in the sequel. Like, well, uh, like Batman v Superman, but not uh, like we need a Man of Steel too. They need to make it. I want to see Brainiac as a villain. I think he would be a great villain, and uh, like that that I. That's all I can say. I'm a huge Zack Snyder fan. I've enjoyed every movie that I've seen of his. Um, I'm probably going to be doing a ranking of all his movies. In my personal opinion, my uh, favorite Zack Snyder movies. But I absolutely love his take on Superman. I think this was a great, great movie. I've rewatched it multiple times. And I highly, highly recommend it. It's such a different, different take on Superman. I know it's controversial that he said, like, it's such a different Superman. It's such a different take on it. But I personally really, really love it. I think they did it so, so well. But anyway, coming in second place is Man of Steel. So, coming in in first place, if you kept up with me, is Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. So, pretty much, this is my favorite movie because of multiple reasons, which I'll get into. But, only the Ultimate Edition comes in at number one. Not the theatrical cut, because I had to cut a lot out, and the sword didn't, like, it was kind of all over the place. But this, the Ultimate Edition, is, in my opinion, the best DCEU movie. In my um, opinion, I think Henry Cavill is an amazing Superman in this. And uh, Ben Affleck completely blows it out in the water in this. When they announced that Ben Affleck was playing Batman, I'm like, hmm. Daredevil, um, okay, I mean, uh, like, uh, he, but he completely shattered my expectations in this, and, uh, Jesse Eisenberg, like, he's an amazing Lex, it kind of bugged me that I heard a rumor that Brian Cranston was actually auditioned for the role of Lex Luthor, and we didn't get it, so I was like, eh, like, why couldn't we have, like, Brian Cranston as Lex Luthor, that, now that would have been amazing, Brian Cranston as Lex Luthor, but, like, it's a longer movie, it's three hours, and I feel like it should have been called Batman and Superman Dawn of Justice, because the actual fight is only, like, at, towards the tail end, and it's only, like, a five-minute fight, but that's kind of just, uh, like, nitpicking and all of that, because I really, really enjoy this movie. I enjoy the how they uh, threw in the Doomsday storyline, how you could tell this was obviously a direct sequel to Batman vs. Superman, because it literally had uh, the beginning of where... They were fighting. He was fighting General Zod, and Bruce Wayne was going through all the wreckage. Like that was one of the absolute best scenes, and I gotta say, this probably has the best of Wayne murders. That sounds weird. Out of all of them, because like it is truly impacting. You can truly tell the weight of it, the music and everything, the slow motion. I mean, you got Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Thomas Wayne, and um, Lauren Cohen, I believe that's her name uh, from The Walking Dead, as Martha Wayne. And like, I know the actual scene. Save. Martha, why, why, why did you say that name? Save Martha, you're letting him kill Martha. And I'm like, um, like a lot of people would like make fun of it, but I personally like, I saw what Zach was trying to do with that, like the scene where um, pretty much uh, Batman saw Superman as just as a evil alien. They even said he's like, if there's even a one percent chance that he's our enemy, we have to take it as the absolute certainty. So like you understood, like he did not trust this uh, being at all whatsoever, and he still he is still grappling from the image of his parents dying in front of him, and the final words that he heard his father say was, "Save Martha." So like in his head, that's the last words that he ever heard. His far well, his uh, the last words I ever heard his father say was Martha. I did uh, I correct myself. I'm sorry about that. But then when he hears Superman say "Save Martha," he's like, "Wait, what?" He's like, "You're letting him kill Martha." And, and then uh, Bruce is like, "Wait, what? Like, uh, how, why? Why are you saying my mother's name? Like, what? What is going on here?" And like it starts messing with him. And I like I truly appreciate how they did that. The music, especially if you want the ultimate edition, where like they throw flashback scenes in where he's like, like all reliving it in his head. And then he heard his father's voice say Martha one last time. And like it was just it was awesome. Like I like it was truly mem memorizing. I really, 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 really like Zack Snyder's like filming and all that. His take on the DC universe. This had the first introduction of Wonder Woman in the, inside the DCEU, and then, like, her famous thing, the da da na 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 and then, like, the, the music, too, the music is great, like, uh, the Lexus theme is great, and then I do like some of Lexus lines in it, too, when he's like, boy, do we have troubles up here, he's like, ooh, Martha, 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 and then he's like, well, Soup, what are you gonna do, you fight the back of Gotham, 
and like, he, like I understand, like he wasn't the best Lex Luthor. There's a, like, there's better Lex Luthers out there, but I enjoyed his craziness for what he did. But like, I would say he would actually made a better Riddler for what it was. But like, I really, really enjoyed this movie. I might make a full video about it because I can ramble on for about it for at least 20 to 30 minutes. But this is already running kind of long. But anyway, coming in first place is Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice. And um, if you um. That was my complete DCEU ranking. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a subscribe so I know to keep making more of these. I know that this video ran kind of long, but I kind of had to like do a quick review of every single DCEU movie and every one that I enjoyed. So that was nine movies to talk over. I'm thinking about doing a uh, review for Zack Snyder's actual movies, like leading up to his uh, cut of Justice League on uh, March 18th. So I might do a separate review video for Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, and uh, Wonder Woman. I believe those were his main ones, but I know he only directed Man of Steel and um, BVS, so I might just do those two. But anyway, like, I'll probably do a Zack Snyder video in general too, just my favorite movies by him, just leading up to his cut coming out March 18th. But anyway, thanks for watching once again, and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye!